So Tesla bots have quite a bit of value, but how much? That's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm Brian, welcome to my Tesla recap. There was a fantastic video I saw a couple days ago put out by Rebellionaire, or Bradford, and uh, Matt Smith uh, go over their valuation model. Now, if you don't know who Matt Smith is, uh, he's a very, very sharp guy, friend of the channel he's been on before, and he breaks it down. He goes through and says, <laughs> it, it could be worth 27 trillion, it could be worth 8 trillion, and it could be worth zero. Because if we're gonna be honest, let's be honest. So uh, that's a good, that's what I want in an analyst. Now my channel, we've, we've come up with numbers anywhere from 1 trillion to 9 trillion. I uh, had a great segment with Randy Kirk where we went through some of the benefits, some of the use cases, and some of the obstacles. Well, what's it really going to be worth? What are you actually going to use it for? And the answer is some things at first and more things over time. Unlike a car that has to work everywhere all the time, a bot can work somewhere some of the time and still have tremendous life, tremendous value. And that's going to be something that you can use to, to do anything. If it can only work in a very specific environment, find that customer and sell it to them. I've had questions, is this gonna be, is this gonna replace all the labor in all the factories? Maybe eventually, but certainly not right out of the gate. Humans are still a lot quicker. If you look at the amount of exploration humans did on the moon with just a few hours, uh, and then compare that to the amount of exploration done on Mars by bots over years, you can quickly see that bots have a ways to go before they catch up and actually become super useful in all cases all the time. But well, what does that mean for the short term? It means just find the use case and sell it. And what's it worth? I don't think they're gonna sell them, I really don't. I think they'll only be for lease. And the beauty there is, if it doesn't work, you just end your lease and give it back. Somebody else will want it. And if it does work, maybe you need more functionality, maybe they can add that over the air, over time, and that can happen. So. What's fun to me is when you get out of the studio, you get some opportunities to see some neat things. Different things happen in different places. And where I live, I don't always get those opportunities. And so uh, what I'm going to do here is take a look at Optimus. Won't you join me? Looks like he uh, wears about a size 9. Now this is just a mock-up, but he's got actuators. He's got uh, all the joints look uh, more or less real. Those are little uh, ball bearings there in the wrist. That's kind of cool. These grenade pins are, uh, of course, holding, uh, holding it all together. And, uh, you know, they grow up so fast, next thing you know, they're already getting pierced, getting in some cool, uh, some cool, uh, some cool jewelry. Who doesn't want a, an elbow ring don't mess with Desna. So a number of stores have these. We don't yet know how, how complete any of them are. This looks like more than a mock-up. These are definitely actual parts. Whether or not this was an actual prototype is a different matter. It's very, very possible that this one never walked. Uh, Dr. Scott Walter uh, has talked with us a number of times. And he's very keen to remind us that uh, we need to be spotting these so we can try and track how many are actually in existence. They move around a bit, so it's kind of tough to say. My question is, where are you going to put the cameras? Obviously, you're going to put one right here. But if we're using the full autonomous suite, does that mean we're going to have cameras on the shoulders? Is this my, is this my side repeater? Is this my fender? Is this my fender and this my, my side repeater? It's tough to say, but it would be an absolute waste to not use the cameras. For that matter, why don't we put a camera right on the hand so that if the screw falls behind the contraption, you can see what you're doing. You don't have to rely on, on touch. You can just get it done. So where do you think the cameras will be? I would like to hear your thoughts. Certainly it's gonna have a camera in the back because knowing what's behind you is helpful uh, knowing if there's an obstacle that you need to be aware of, knowing that you can walk backwards without turning your head, because this head does not appear to turn. But you can absolutely get a pretty wide field of view without it. Uh, in case of emergency, I assume you press button, 
Um, but I'm assuming that uh, that some channels on X are going to find a way to disable that and then ban me if I mention it. So I won't do that. There's, uh, yeah, it's got a lot of uh, axes of motion. So my question is, what are we going to do? What are we going to do when they come? I think the answer is uh, rejoice, because there's not enough flavor to go around right now. And maybe this will swing the pendulum too far. Maybe there won't be enough labor at all, uh, but maybe it's uh, not going to be a problem. Whether Tesla builds them or someone else, the, uh, the reality is they're coming. Everyone's working on them. Somebody's going to get them. Making sure my mic's working. Everyone's working on them. Somebody's going to finish it. And when they do, they're going to get to scale. Remember, Boston Dynamics is working on a humanoid robot, but theirs is engineered in such a way that it will make it cost prohibitive to do the vast majority of tasks. But these would be great. Put them in the loading lot so that the car self-drives itself out, self-drives itself onto the, the car carrier, and then this guy buckles it down and validates with a camera that the strap is secured, measures torque, whatever it needs to do, so there's no question. Kick it back to Dojo, Dojo confirms, yeah, you secured the car properly, and then the self-driving semi takes it to your delivery center or just to your neighborhood, drops it off in front of you. And uh, maybe the bot uh, goes along for the ride. You only need one per semi, hops out, unstraps it, away you go. What do you think? Pretty crazy, huh? I do want to give a huge thanks to my patrons, uh, especially new patron, Bob, who I actually got to meet the other day. Thank you, Bob, so much. For your decision to support the channel, it is the reason I'm able to keep going out and doing all these crazy things, like seeing stuff and uh, popping little surprises in. So for everyone else, you know, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I do want to know what you think the cost's going to be, where the cameras will go, and some of the use cases. And for everyone else, you know, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you, clever robots. Haha, fortuitous little bit of uh, channel branding on the next one.